All right, so we're going to look now at double integrals in polar coordinates. Um, and we've already seen some examples in class. We'll do a couple more in the videos. And we went over one explanation in class as well for, for where this, this formula comes from for doing integrals in polar coordinates. Remember the, the most important part, and I, I tried to make it sort of extra bold here, this R that shows up, right? So this whole r dr d theta, right? That's what your dA looks like in polar coordinates rather than doing dx dy, right? And so we, we, we did one explanation in class thinking of, you know, if you have like a circular arc that the length of that arc is like r times theta, right? So think of like r times delta theta, right? So r times delta theta giving you the length of one side delta r giving you the length of the other side. Um, this is one way to think about where that area element is coming from. Um, I sketched out another way to think about it, and I'm going to do that in more detail for you now. Um, so the other way that you can think about doing this, doing polar coordinates, is what you're really doing is you're doing a change of variables. You're doing a transformation, right? What you're really doing is you have you have some problem going on over here in the xy plane, right? And you've got this region, you know, however, however it looks, this region D that you're dealing with over here in the xy plane. And, and you would like to take this and replace it with something simpler. And so one of the ways that you want to think about this is you want to think of this region D as coming from some simpler region, so something like, let's say, a rectangle. Uh, and we want to think of D as the range of some function apply whose domain is this rectangle. So we want to think about applying some transformation, let's call it T, um, so that the image of this rectangle becomes this more complicated region over here in the xy plane. And the transformation that we use, T of R and theta, is r cos theta, r sine theta. Now, remember that the that this this function t takes values in in r two, where we're using x and y as the coordinates in r two. So this is x. This is y. Right as we normally have in our polar coordinate transformation, right? We, x is r cos theta, y equals r sine theta. We get that from basic triangle trigonometry, right? Cos theta is opposite over hypotenuse, sine theta, or sorry, adjacent over hypotenuse, sine theta opposite over hypotenuse. That's where these equations come from. Okay, well, one of the things that we talked a little bit about back in the chapter on derivatives is that if you have a map like this from R2 to R2, you can take the derivative of it, and the derivative is going to be a matrix, right? So the derivative of t as a function of r and theta is going to be a 2 by 2 matrix whose entries are dx dr, okay? I always, gotta, I always get these wrong. Uh, and, then, and then dx d theta. I always forget whether I should do the x's across or do the x's down, but actually for what we're doing here, it's not going to matter so much because um, we're going to take a determinant of this thing. So if I'm off by a transpose, well, the determinant doesn't care about transpose. So we'll be all right in the end. Okay, so, so that's what the derivative looks like. And we can, of course, we can calculate those derivatives, right? The partials with respect to r cos theta, sine theta, partials with respect to theta, minus r sine theta, and r cos theta, okay? So that's what the derivative looks like. Okay, so what you want to understand with this derivative map, right, is, is you want to think of you want to think of the following. I'm going to redraw this here, and I'm going to draw it a little bit bigger. So what you want to think of as happening is that you're over here in this r theta coordinate system, 
you have a point, all right? You have a point R theta. You apply this map T. And that's going to send you to some point over here, right? Some point x, y. Okay. Now, you might want to have a little rectangle over here. And you want to think about what happens to that little rectangle when you apply the map t. So certainly one of the things that you can do is you can, you can map the four corners of those rectangles, right? So if we move horizontally, if we keep um, theta constant, but we vary r, we know that corresponds to something going radially outwards from the origin. So you get a piece like that, okay? Um, maybe I should try to color code the points. Um, now, what about this point here? So that point there corresponds to um, keeping r constant while varying theta. That means you're moving along a circle. So you're moving along a circle like so, right? So there's a little circular arc there that gets you to that point. Okay. And well, okay, there's this remaining point here which corresponds to that piece there, okay? But what I want you to think about is I want to think about vectors. So this vector here would be, let's say, the vector, just the unit vector, let's say, i times, times delta x, right? So in other words, delta x not delta x, delta r, sorry. So used to writing delta x. Okay. i times delta r. So that's delta r times 1, 0. Um, we have, let's do it in blue. I've got too many colors on the go. Um, this vector here, and this would be j times delta theta. So delta theta times 0, 1. Um, so a basic philosophy that we, we, we sort of unofficially saw in the previous chapter is that uh, one way of interpreting the chain rule, one of the things that the chain rule tells you is that if you want to know what happens to vectors based at a point, so t takes this point and puts it over at that point there, um, and if you want to know what happens to the vectors base at those points, well, um, you know, you take curves, you see where these curves map to, right? They're just lines, so we know where those curves map to, it maps to those lines. And, and the tangents to these curves, well, they need to become tangents to these curves over here. So, so this will become, right, so this one here will become, I should try to be consistent with my colors, um, will become this one. Okay. And the other one, which I did in blue, is, is going to be here. Okay. And so the idea is that the area of the little parallelogram spanned by those two vectors, that parallelogram should be pretty close in area to the area of this region. So the image of this rectangle goes to this kind of chunk of a circle, right? Um, but that is an area that's pretty close to the area of that parallelogram. The other thing we know is that this vector here is given by taking, taking dt at r theta and, and then multiplying by the vector we started with over here. So multiplying by delta r times 1, 0. That's not going to fit. Um, I'm running out of board. OK, so times um, i delta r. And this vector here 
dt r theta times j delta theta. And, and then you try to work out, you know, what those are. And in fact, you can work out what they are. Um, so if you want to, I'm not going to do that part because actually we don't need it. Um, you can work out what these two vectors are, and then you could take those two vectors, you could put them into a two by two determinant, and that two by two determinant is going to give you the area of that little parallelogram, right? Um, but one of the things that you learn in linear algebra, in, and this is sort of a basic fact, is that, here's a fact from 1410, you can, this is very easy to check. Um, if I did, so let's say I do A times U, A times V. So think of U and V as, as um, column vectors like this, right? So I'm going to arrange those two columns into a 2 by 2 determinant. Um, you can check that that's the same thing as doing determinant of A times the determinant of the 2 by 2 matrix you get by just using U and V. All right. Well, we know what this is, right? Because this matrix is just the identity matrix. This determinant is just one, right? This is the determinant we want. We want to get this area. So, so the determinant, right, the, the area of this region here is, it's given by the determinant of dt, at r theta, okay? Um, this thing has a name. This is called the Jacobian of the transformation. I mean, this is also called the Jacobian matrix. Um, but this is often denoted by J for Jacobian, T for the transformation, and then r and theta because those are our variables, okay? So what is the Jacobian of this transformation? We have, we have the matrix sitting right here. So the Jacobian is going to be what? Well, we know how to do two by two determinants. Cos theta times r cos theta. r cos squared theta, right? We do that diagonal minus the other diagonal, which is minus r sine squared, minus r sine squared theta. So that is r times cos squared theta plus sine squared theta, okay? Sine squared plus cos squared, well, that's just 1. So there's r, right, this, uh, this transformation factor. So what you want to think of is this, this Jacobian, if you like, and we'll talk about this more generally later on, right? This factor of r that shows up in the formula. Um, what that is doing is it's telling you when you do this change of variables, when you do this change of coordinates from r theta over to x, y using polar coordinates, um, well, areas get distorted, right? Areas, you know, you're, as you move from here to there, you're, you're stretching things in different directions, right? Things get stretched and pulled. And if you want to know how much are things getting stretched and pulled, how much does the area over here transform when you move over here? Um, it transforms by a factor of r. Right? So whatever r you're at, right, the area of this region here is going to be r times the area of that region there. And that's why it shows up in this integral formula. Okay, so once more, just showing where things come from. It's good to see where things come from, right? You want to know what you're doing when you do these things. Now that we have some idea of, of why this formula makes sense, and I mean, okay, there's a lot of details I'm still kind of putting under the carpet here, right? There's some things you still have to believe me on. Um, but now that we accept this formula, we can try it in a few examples.